Hello, VOD people. Let's see. Um, yep, my setup looks okay. Let's just. Uh, about there ish, I think. There we go. Can't see behind the thingy right now, but that's okay. Uh, actually, if I do this, I can do like this. Fancy pants. Which actually let me, lets me know how much you can see too. Oh, that's nice. Okay, let's get started. Uh, I'm not going to stream for that long this time, so it'll be what it what it is. Uh, let's see. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm trying to build like an online tool for using the Aces High rules from Arcadia Three. Arcadia is an uh, is a D and D magazine published by MCDM, and in the third issue they have optional rules for aerial dog fighting combat aerial combat uh, a lot of dog fighting basically and what you do is you basically have six or um, high altitude altitudes levels from two to six which are regular altitude then you got um, high altitude which is from seven to twelve and if and altitude one is basically you're about to crash and it uses this these altitudes to um, <clears throat> signify how close combatants are to each other and you're able to attack another uh, combatant if they are on the same uh, altitude as you or one higher or one lower or one of the neighboring altitudes and uh, yeah so what i'm building here is as you can see over here it's basically just like a simple uh, tool where you can move the tokens between the different layers i did start out this project with a much loftier goal with like a lot of config that you could set up and players connecting and everything but it kind of got out of hand with scope creep <laughs> so what i've ended up uh, landing on instead is basically um, oh actually I need to fix the uh, stream title just give me a second here um, programming with svelte I guess uh, software development yes done there we go. So um, yeah, with much loftier goals, I uh, you, you you would set up the combat, you would do all the different steps that the rules set out, and it kind of just got out of hand, and <laughs> it just got uh, managed to to end up being a lot of work, which were not necessary, basically. So I'm doing something a lot much more simple, just to get something kind of out of the door, again, again like, like an M MVP, if you will, which will at least be something. Um, yeah, so I'm, prob I'm I'm about finished. I'm just going to need to do some tweaking. doesn't look very good. It's very bare bones, but that's kind of the point. It's just that i got to shove something out of the door to just get it off of my back, and I can come back to it later and tweak it a bit over time, I think. And... Um, Hopefully that'll, um, that'll, um, uh, yeah, it, 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 I just want to get something out of the door basically. So let's get, uh, get moving. So as you can see, we already, we've already got some stuff here. We're able to move these tokens around. This one I doesn't have an image. We're not able to edit that. Oh, right. If you click them, <laughs> they're removed, which, which works. Uh, you can move them like this. And then when you move them on the same layer, they arrange themselves according to initiative inside of the combat. Uh, so even if you try to do this, it re reorients uh, according to initiative. For some reason, I can't remember why I thought that was necessary, but okay, that's the thing. Uh, and then you get a simple combat tracker or turn tracker, if you will, which lets you uh, switch between the different uh, actors and whose turn it is. So we can do... Ooh, this does not look good on 
Oh, okay, so it has a min size, I'm guessing. That's triggering here. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's supposed to be like an... Yeah, this is not showing up. If I... There we go. <laughs> so I, I set them in with for that dialogue recently, and apparently it's a bit too wide still. Okay, so what I'm, what I'm thinking right now is there should be a view where you add the actors. So right now you have to click the add actor, go through the whole rigmarole. So if we can, we can do like a, uh, I don't know, what's a flying creature? Ooh, a griffin, right? And we can get a get a token. Um, let me just grab that off screen. Uh, griffin token. Let's see what we get here. Uh, sure. Let's take this one. Actually, let's... Nah, that doesn't matter. That one. We'll, we'll grab that URL. Paste that in. Paste. And it preloads the token over here. You can set kind of the parameters of where it should start, the altitude, and the should have the flight modifier. And you add it to, add it to the list. And now we can advance the roll of them. Okay, so that's all working. Um, we're able to move these around. You can hover over them to see who they are and everything. So when you start, before you start combat, I want it to be like that you can add multiple actors uh, in the beginning uh, rather quickly, I think, <clears throat> in some kind of a simple system. And then uh, after doing that, you can start combat and then you're, you should be able to add more actors afterwards. It looks like the stream is uh, struggling. Um, can we just turn up the preview? Uh, hi, player. Sure. So what we'll do first, I think, um, is maybe we should add a way to start of the combat. So the question becomes, should we put it at different routes? Kind of tempted to do that. Well, actually, I was thinking that maybe... No, we'll put them at different routes. I think that's that makes more sense. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, I'm really conflicted, actually. <laughs> no, 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 let's not overcomplicate this. <laughs> That's the problem from last time. Let's not do that. Okay, so we're just going to make it a single page. We'll, we'll just have to store if the combat has been, um, uh, if the combat has started, and, and do that way. So, what we'll do is... We'll, yeah, okay. we'll start by creating some kind of, um, should probably start with some kind of uh, toggle that tells you whether or not we're actually in active combat. Which I think I will put it in the encounter state over here, which contains actors and the current actor ID. Okay. Uh, I guess we can just add... Okay, so this is actually an encounter state. So if we start by adding something here. Um, well, actually, we do know when it started. It's when the current actor ID has been set because it's not set by default. Ha, huh, nice, okay, I like this. I, I like not adding like specific, um, not toggles, but like, state management just for something like this. I think I prefer to kind of, uh, what's it called? Um, in, uh, kind of intuit a game state based on actual state. <laughs> so instead of storing like, has the game started, uh, the, the combat started or not, just 
if you have something else that kind of indicates the same thing, use that instead as an indicator of whether or not you're in a, a set of a, a specific state or something. Um, that leads to much less um, conflict between two different parts of the state that might, might not be in sync. Uh, okay, let's see. I've got some uncommitted stuff here. Let's just commit that. Um, ah, it's a sorting thing. Should I store that? Yeah, I'll just keep it. Uh, sort actors by uh, initiative. There we go. Okay. So. We're storing them. Yeah, so I'm thinking that we might split this up between like uh, a setup screen and a combat screen. We've got something called combat arena already, but that's that's just this altitude thingy magic, all these two put together. So that's not a good name for it, but um Let's just create another one, a new directory called screens. Instead of this, we got um, a component called setup. Let's call it setup screen. Uh, that is to be made, so let's just do this and call it setup. And then we're going to add another one. Which we'll call com, com, oh, combat screen, like so. And this is basically what's inside of index right now, which is what we're seeing over here. So if we open index, we can see that it's a combination of the turn tracker and the combat arena. Huh, that's actually quite neat. <laughs> I've already spent some time splitting this up, I see. Turn phase, stunt or action, right? This is some kind of, this is a bit of legacy from the earlier part where I, I had a lot more planned. Let turn phase, right, which is not used at all. Uh, let's, let's do, yeah, let's just move these into the combat screen. First of all, like so, uh, we'll just grab a script up here, add some spacing, import that and import that, like so. Remove this, indent these, and then inside of index, where are you? There we go. Uh, we'll not do one of these. We'll remove basically everything and we'll say instead that we're going to import encounter encounter state yeah and then we're going to do an if and if encounter state state dot Current, oh, this is not working exactly properly. Current actor ID. Uh, let's see. Uh, cur oh, current, oh, come on. <laughs> okay, current actor ID. There we go. If there is a current actor ID, we're going to do something. If not, we're going to do something else. Let's just add these cases in here. So if there is a current actor ID, we're going to show the combat screen, like so. And if not, we're going to show oops, sorry, uh, the setup screen, like so. Let's come to that. Yeah, here we go. Excellent. Um, so for the setup screen, right, this menu at the top here, should we keep that or 
should that go maybe? So that's part of the layout, I'm guessing. Show add actor modal. Right, right, right. So that's that's nice to have in the the in the layout, I guess. Yeah, there probably should be a bit more generic system for this, but uh, let's not worry about that now. This works, so we'll keep it. Hmm. The question is whether or not this nav should be here during setup. Hmm. I'm kind of thinking no. Uh, but let's leave it for now, I think. Yeah, let's leave it for now. So, during setup, we really want to show the add actor, oh, sorry, uh, modal form, which I've separated into a separate form already. But we... Do we just show that at the bottom? I think we do. Okay, so let's head over to the setup screen. So I think, no, 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 not the, not the modal. Um, actor form, I think, yeah. And you need to put in, um, so we got like the, uh, so let's just call it actor, which is a uh, type of actor. Um, if I remember correctly, this exports actually the type it's, uh, that's used. Actor, I think. It, is, it does give me squigglies. Can I resolve symbol? Isn't it? Um, yeah, there is an export uh, actor here. I think this is the way you do it, isn't it? Uh, we'll leave it for now and see if it works itself out. And uh, that's the current actor. And let's do add actor. Uh, actually, this is already done in the uh, actor modal. Yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna grab all this, basically, and copy all this and paste it in here. Uh, we're going to skip importing that. Oh. We're not going to close anything. And we're going to have a quick look see in the modal here to see when it should. Uh, because I guess we're creating. That's just a close thingy. Oh, right, because the button is actually part of the modal. It's just a form. But, right, right, right. So if I save this, we get some errors, which is interesting. Uh, maybe because we didn't hook up the actor, I'm guessing. So let's just do that. Actor, like so. There we go. Right. Look, we got it. Hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, let's do button I guess yeah uh, so we're just gonna do a good old button right here and we've actually got a system set up for translations too so we're gonna take advantage of that uh, let's see I've got strings.ts right Add actor. Uh, 
I've tried to keep this kind of kind of located where it belongs. So I'm thinking I should probably move these to like the actor form thingy. So, oh right, the form itself actually has a uh, has its own thing. Right, so what we're going to do then is move this out to its own thing. Uh, it's going to go here. We're going to call it actor form instead after the component. I'm going to have to add a comma there. Name, token URL. Uh, this all looks fine. These are just the fields over here. Yep. Uh, and then we'll add a setup screen add actor add actor like so so inside of the actor form we'll need to update a lot of these translations let's see here this is instead let's see all of these Yes, actor form, like so. That's going to work nicely. Let's go back to the setup screen. And instead of the button, we'll add a text component with a key of setup screen dot add actor like so there we go that works nicely what's nice with with um, a nice thing about the system with the text um, components is that if you actually change the, um, the language while the app is running it will automatically switch all the labels which is very <laughs> much overkill for my usage but um it was fun implementing it so i i just did it basically um, I'm thinking maybe we'll, hmm, how should we align this button? Kind of conflicted. Maybe center it? Does that look weird? Maybe. Hmm. We'll just put it in a div. Um, add actor container. I don't know. Let's add as a style to that. Add actor container. This is just display flex and justify the content along the center. Oops, center. And uh, just for. the button let's set the width to 80 percent see how that looks uh, yeah 80 percent is probably not a good idea let's do how much would that be probably like 40 rem maybe that's a bit wide 30 maybe 20 sure 10 Hmm, actually, let's, <laughs> let's do padding instead. Uh, does it come with any padding by default? That's probably the first thing to check. So let's have a look. Ooh, this is very much squished. Let's see, if I do this, okay, yeah, that helps. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's inspect that on you. And let's have a look at the classes, which are scrunched up in here. Oh, wait a second, why don't I just do this? Haha, -ha. <laughs> that's a lot easier. Uh, let's see, uh, what you got going on here? Button, no padding it seems. Is that right? That doesn't feel right. Padding. Yeah, there is a bit of padding, yeah. Uh, let's see, padding. 
0.3 and 0.9 rem. Okay. Uh, what was it? 0.3 uh, above and below and 0.9 on the sides. So we'll, we'll probably, we'll just do the left and right padding individually. So <clears throat> we'll bump that to like, let's say four rem. That seems a good number. Yeah, that's nice and wide. Maybe wider. Uh, that does not wider. This is wider. Sure. Yeah, I'm not really sure if that's better or worse than this. I like the wider one better, I guess. Let's go with that. And let's do a max width of 100% just to make sure. So if we end up on a really tiny screen, this shouldn't do, um, it shouldn't go bananas. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, so that works, uh, hopefully. Uh, what we should also add in here uh, do, 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 do. we got the actor form and the whole thing going. Uh, we should probably also add a list of the combatants that we've already added. Um, let's just oh, let's not add it here. Let's add it here. So for each of the encounter state that actors. Um, as actor, uh, let's just do like an uh, H two of the oops, actor dot name. Right, so we got some actors, which is good. Should maybe the, the form go on top and you add them below? I kind of think that make, might make more sense actually when I think about it. Yeah, maybe on top and then you could do like side by side if you have a wide screen, that makes sense. I kind of want to make this work on mobile first because that's the one thing that annoys me a lot about these tools for uh, role playing games that they always kind of assume that you're on a computer. And I kind of wanted to make it a bit more friendly if you're playing at the table, for example, so let's let's try to keep it with keep the um, the table friendly uh, size for now. Uh, actually, let's also do. I need to hook up the button. <laughs> uh, so uh, if we do on click add actor. Like this and don't do that if it's not ready and we need to reset the uh, should we maybe now we'll just copy this for now <laughs> And uh, we'll have to find the, the figure out a better way to do this later. If this works for now. So in theory, I could add add like a human um, with a <laughs> huge fly modifier. Yeah, so that works as ex expected. That's good. Uh, let's add a way to remove them again. Uh, let's format this. Um, so I'm guessing that we're just going to do like an article with a card, which is something built in in the CSS library that I'm using. Uh, H2, actor the name. And down here, we'll just. <coughs> Do before we forget. And instead of a, <coughs> instead of the card, 
Wow. It should display inline. Oh, not likes, just good old inline. And then over yonder, uh, we'll have a button. The class error. It'll have a text component with the key of uh, setup screen. Remove, remove actor, like so. Back with strings, setup screen, remove actor, remove actor. There we go. Good, good. And we'll add card, display flex, just define content with space between and align the items along the baseline like so i think we're going to make the button a bit smaller card uh button uh font size let's do 0.7 run uh oh let's do em actually Ooh, sure sure small isn't it eight yeah let's do eight uh, uh, uh. <laughs> bit uncertain uh also let's do zero margins on this uh, is that not what, what's along uh <laughs> no padding okay that's fine uh let's change it to padding there we go. And we'll rather add the padding over here. So for the padding, let's do like uh, point, um, point 0.5 rem along the whole thing, maybe? Yeah, sure. I'm kind of regretting this baseline. Maybe just do like center here too. Yeah, I think that looks better. I'm not really a designer, so probably not it's not aligned correctly though <laughs> well i guess i guess it is feels wonky it, it hmm right because of the sure let's let's just keep it like this okay uh right so for the remove button, let's do it on click. Uh, I think that we need like a remove actor and just passing the actor like so. Uh, let's add it over here. Const remove actor, actor. I think there is like an encounter state remove actor. Yeah, there you go. So why pass through the middleman? No reason really. So let's just do it over here. Counter state remove actor like so. Just remove this. We'll save that. And if we click here, yep, the human is gone. Nice. So as you can see, we've already got a lot of infrastructure already hooked up from all the previous work that I've done on this. Um, iterating through stuff that I didn't really need to iterate through. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I'm wondering if I should show some of these metadata or if I should just don't not bother, basically. I could um, I 
Yeah, you know what? I'm going to put these in a header uh, like so. Which means that we're going to need to move some of this stuff. Let's see all of this. Maybe. Let's just do this and see what happens. Okay, basically the same, which is kind of what we wanted. Um, now, let's add some content, which we'll do over here. Um, just give it a class of content, I guess. And I'm kind of trying to figure out how Actually, uh, let's do like pairs of data, I guess. Yeah. How do we want to do this? Um, and inside of there, we've got a strong and a spam, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's, whoa. Uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, let's uh, do this and this and this and this, I guess. Instead of here, uh, we're going to put a text key, uh, setup screen, The flight modifier. And instead of the spam, we'll do the actor flight modifier. I think that's how it's done. Uh, like so. I think that's the name of the, the property. Can I get that? Uh, yeah, not really. Doesn't really know. And let's do this for the three properties. Uh, let's see, flat modifier. Let's just assume that these gonna, are going to be the same for all of them. Uh, seven. Uh, let's see. And the last one being oh, initiative. There we go. Let's go back to strings. Flight modifier. Flight modif. All right, these are already up here. We we'll just copy these, like so. And what we're going to do is um, I'm going to give these a class, I think. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So if we highlight this, we can select these three. We'll give them each a class called property fields. Field. Property. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have like a, <laughs> I have an idea here I'm trying to, to figure out. Let's see, card, header, uh, H2, button. Maybe we should make sure that we're properly selecting these, so uh, that way. Uh, content. Uh, oh. And this is going to display a grid, actually, which I feel is very underutilized in the front-end development world. Uh, grid. <laughs> I, I don't use it enough to remember all these uh, in my head. Grid template columns. And we're going to do... 
uh, how is it that you do? Um, I think it's min max, and you do like track breath, track breath, min max. Yeah. So let's see. We probably want like at least a hundred pixels, maybe, and then the rest of the thing, one fraction, which means one part of the remaining space after you've laid out everything. So if you've got like 600 pixels of space and this has a min size of 100, uh, oh, rather, uh, let's do 300 pixels. So this is a min size of 100 pixels. So if you have two elements and 300 pixels of space, you can assign, the first item will have 100 pixels, then the next will have 100 pixels, and then you're going to have 100 pixels left. So what you can do then is when you specify one fraction, you say of the remaining space that's left, I want one fraction of that, of all the different, um, I want one part of that divided between all of us that are requesting any of that space. So if everyone requests one fraction, you add up all the fractions and then divide them by uh, the sum of all the fractions and divide them accordingly. So one element could say, I want one fraction of the remainder, so the remaining space, and another could say I want two fractions. So you add, add them up, three, and then you divide part of fractions according to how many they want. So two to, two, two to one of them and three to one of them. So for example, <clears throat> uh, you could just use one fraction as a size generally. So if you've got something where you want the first element to, to cover one third of the uh, of the width and the next one to cover two thirds of the width, you could specify one fraction for the first one, two fractions for the second one. To uh, as summed up, they become three. It's three, and then you divide the three parts uh, according to how many fractions they requested. Which is a really nice system. It kind of works like percentages. The but the nice part is that it always <laughs> fractions always add up to like to one whole, so you don't have uh, any. Uh, leftover space. So if, for example, if you wanted to divide something by three, have like three columns or something, saying 33% won't actually cover it because 33 times three is 99, not 100. But with fractions, you get that properly divided. So three, give them each one fraction each and they'll, they'll have one third each uh, in the end. So if I remember correctly, this should give me columns or, or other elements uh, that's at least 100 pixels and just use the remainder of the space, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I might have to look this up again. So if we do all this, uh, let's see what we end up with. Okay, that's not too bad, uh, but not exactly what I wanted. I think we need a repeat here somewhere because now we're just defining a single column with this size and that's what we're getting. A um, single column with each element stacked on top of each other, which is what a grid would do. We wanted to repeat as many times as necessary. Um, I think that's where the repeat thing comes in, but I can't remember how you use it. You do something like this, but you need to specify multiple things. Autofill, auto fit or integer. Autofill and auto fit. They are different. Okay, we need to look this up. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna expand this and I'm going to visit my own blog because I've actually written a post about this just so I can look it up later. CSS grid. Uh yeah. Autofill and auto fit. <laughs> It's as if I wrote this down for myself. Who would have thunk? Right, so here we got repeat four. Repeat 100 pixels four times. That makes sense. So that's what you get here uh, through this excellent animation. So autofill. Autofill says automatically fill the row with as many columns as possible given this width. Autofill is used in conjunction with repeat like this. Repeat autofill 100 pixels. Right. So put as many, uh, how many? As many as you can. How, how, how large are they? 100 pixels. 
So over here, we said four, so we get four and, uh, of 100 pixels. Autofill says as many, uh, as many 100 pixels cells or, or items as you can. But with auto fit though, oh, min max, yes, yes, yes. Min max, do, 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 do. Uh, very handy in conjunction with autofill. I really love this word while I was writing this blog post apparently. Let's specify minimum maximum value. Right, because this is where we're at now. So 100 pixels went to a maximum of one fraction. The rest of the available space, the columns will auto size to fill the row. This is what I want. Ah, right. But as you can see, once there is enough space for one more, so so far so good, but oh, what's this? Two empty spaces. We don't want that either. So we probably want auto fit. Um, so this looks very much the same, not very compared with this becomes apparent when you instruct the browser to handle the left row space in a row. So repeat auto fit min max one fraction. So yeah, right. So it's not really visible in, up here. But what autofill does is over here, there are actually uh, more cells are added in as um, as soon as there are space left. But with autofit, it, it, it won't add any more empty columns, basically. That's a better way to put it. So this is what I want, where the columns expand to be as wide as they can be. Uh, and if there are no more items, they it won't add any extra columns. So the problem is with autofill, it'll put in as many columns as it can, um, given the restraints. So even down, as you can see down here, it, it's adding empty columns because there are space for empty columns. With autofill though, uh, no, sorry, with autofit, uh, it won't add any extra columns. Uh, it'll just be no, no columns. Uh, but with the min max go uh, two, you'll get the. Um... <laughs> I spy an M1 Mac. How do you spy an M1 Mac? Well, uh, anyways, it, it'll um, make the columns as wide as um, as they can be. So that is what we want. Ooh, whoa, <laughs> that's not what I want. So um, repeat out of fit with a min max of the thingy so repeat auto fit min max of the thingy yeah so this looks to be right so if we go back here we have a look oh yeah this is uh not exactly what i imagined uh i think i need to add oh right <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> I do have one of the uh, one of the boxes behind me. <laughs> uh, that's a giveaway. That was not intended, actually. <laughs> I just had some empty space. Okay, that's uh, it's actually a bit embarrassing. <laughs> I was, it, okay, yeah, uh, I'll probably have to move that box now. <laughs> Which did I get? Um, it's a 14 inch with um, with uh, 32 gigs of RAM, basically, uh, and whatever CPU and GPU came along with that. I just I just wanted the RAM and I wanted the size. So 14 inch, 32 gigs, <laughs> uh, and one terabyte the hard drive. That that's plenty for me already. I've usually gone for. 512 gigabytes, but um, that wasn't an option this time around. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Nice. The roof of machines. Yeah, I really like love the new design. Um, the the kind of return to the very classic design. Uh, classic. Uh, well, design from like 15 years ago. I really like the design. The only problem is, <laughs> the only problem is, um, <laughs> they're a bit harder to pick up now than they were before. So if you, if you have it like on a, on a table or a, some kind of surface, you don't really get your fingers underneath the computer anymore. So you kind of have to always use two hands to be able to pick it up, which is not very, it's a bit annoying. <laughs> it hasn't got that same tip rejection. No, 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 it hasn't. Um, the, the trick that I've kind of 
found is that uh, in, um, below the hinge, the screen hinge, there's a, like a quite a big gap for the uh, for the ventilation for the air to pass out, and um, I'm able to put my fingers inside of there. So I can kind of grab it from that and then just readjust my grip uh, accordingly. But yeah, but apart from that, I really love it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I probably want. I think I know what I want here, but I think it's gonna it's gonna make my HTML look bad. Uh, let's see, flight modifier of zero. So if we do this, put it all on a line, no spaces where they're not supposed to be, like so. Oop, no, no, not that one. There we go. And then if we I think if we put a non-breaking space in here, that works, kinda. But we're not gonna do that. Oh. What we're gonna do instead is increase the size. Let's see how that do. That works. So if we change the size now kind of uh, automatic uh, automatic magically adjusts according yeah I don't know sure it works it works that's the important part should they be centered maybe or should it, it doesn't nah. might make it a bit more Nah, we're gonna keep it like that. Uh, we'll, we probably want to add some padding though. Cards, con. Uh, why am I doing this? Um, <laughs> padding. Let's just do the the five RAM again. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Can I move these chat windows around, or the things around? Oh, nice. So put that over here. That's a lot better. Kind of figuring out. Uh, oh, save. Sure. Layout one. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see. We're able to add actors. To our heart's content. Uh, I think I'm going to switch around the order of these as I mentioned earlier. Uh, let's see. Uh, like this, yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, we should probably have some kind of uh, divider here. <laughs> oh. oh, no, no. There you go. <laughs> divider. The uh, OG divider of the horizontal rule. And if we. <laughs> uh, let's just do this and paste it in here them in the same order as the HTML, because that's something I like to do. And let's just add some margins to this. So do, 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 maybe like, uh, like a rem on, yeah, sure. Let's do that. Um, actually let's do, let's keep that, but make this like two maybe. Yeah, sure, that's good. Um, we 
where do we put the button to start the combat? On the top, at the top here? I think maybe we do. Sure, let's do that. Uh, let's just put it right in here. We'll put it in if, uh, if the encounter state that actors dot length length is greater than one. That means we're ready for combat. We'll add a button. Uh, we'll add as warn warning, I think. And it has some text. And uh, text says set up. Uh, um, start combat. Let's go to strings, uh, setup screen, start combat, start combat, there we go, Oop. setup screen, start combat, where did I type anything, there we go, <clears throat> maybe that actually should be line just this just yeah let's let's do that uh, the two uh, class um, start come that container so start come container Let's set a margin uh, to the bottom of this, uh, two rems. Display flex, justify content to be centered. Oop. Uh, center. Uh, let's give it the same treatment as this too. Uh, so that's for the button itself. So start combat container button. Oop, not that, but this. Right, that gives them a different sizes. That's not what we want really. Uh, maybe it's just okay. How how wide are they now? Or rather, this one. Is that the button itself or the text? Kind of feel like. I went. Ugh. <laughs> that was not easy. Uh, let's see. Away with that one. Button. Yes. Oh, that is the button. But it can. Okay. Uh, sure. Yeah. Two thirty-five wide. Okay. Uh, let's just go with two fifty pixels. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and let's just copy that over here. That's an equal size. Looks a bit weird. Yeah, sure it does. Kind of though. <laughs> ah, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's see. What do we want to do for... I think we want to add some animation to that, actually. Just to make it a bit more... Let's just slide, I think. And... Go back down here uh, to this one. So transition oh, in, we're gonna slide, and we're gonna configure it to be like two seconds, I think. I, I want to be uh, to last for a while. So if we add, remove two actors, it disappears. Then we add one back in, so we can melt, which can fly for some reason. Yeah, two seconds might be a li bit long, but I, w I want it to be not not very subtle. Just make it, make it really clear that we're that you're now able to start combat. So if we go back here, we add the elf back in. Yeah, that's more more than good enough, right? And then we you can start combat. So starting combat on click. Uh, I think we can just uh, do 
counter state advanced turn. Uh, but would that be friends? So clicky clicky. Oh, uh, that did not do anything. <laughs> uh, what does advanced turn do? So it tries to find the blah 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 blah. So the previous actor. It says previous actor and rest from the current list of actors. So for each actor of uh, the rest array, if the previous actor, that ID is the same as the current actor ID, the right. So cur is the, is the current encounter state, right, right, right. So if the previous actor ID is the same as the current actor ID, set the current actor ID to the uh, current actor in the loop, right, okay, and return. If it's not the case, set previous actor to the one that we're currently added to actor, and if we don't return at all, set the current actor ID to the first actor or an empty string and then return. Okay. That makes sense. So. Uh, if we do this, do you, can you, can you find it? Yeah. Hmm. I think, I think this is the right, uh, let's see, uh, where are we, yeah. So when you subscribe, you get the encounter state. And the encounter state is this one, which has a current actor ID, right? But it doesn't appear Hmm. Let's try to log this. Uh, encounter state dot current actor ID. Uh, let's go with the log. So we sh could should probably assume that it's okay. Nothing happens. That's right. Elf. Add that as an actor. Start combat is now available. Right. I click it and nothing happens. That is interesting. So if we go in here, we look at advanced turn. If we get in here, let's just log actor.name to see what we're at. Okay, so we printed something, but I didn't put, okay. <laughs> um, let's put in advance turn, like so, and go back here and, uh, index okay so index is logging that this is the current actor id which to my shouldn't you be hmm shouldn't this if If it is a shit, um, if it's not null, what, what am I, 
what am I missing? Why is this if not doing what I think it should do? Am I doing something wrong? No, it must be the youth that's wrong. Hmm. We are observing that it's... We might be observing that it's changing. So we remove... We remove these two actors. This makes the index update. Or does it? Well, the encounter state is updated. That makes sense. <clears throat> let's, let's click the reset button. See if that works. So, elf. Let's add that to the mix. Okay. Here you go. Did that add anything to the list? I th it seems so. Elf. Yeah, okay. The reset button, though. Does that not work? Well, it didn't return any errors. Okay, let's see. If we now click reset. Yeah, it resets. Oh, it only... <laughs> Uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, set this to an empty string again. Uh, yeah. Okay, empty string, right. That's what we expect. So, now, let's set the elf. Uh, add actor. Still an empty string. We add a dragon. Still an empty string. And we start combat. It's now not an empty string, but we're still seeing the wrong thing. I would think have I have I typed something wrong? Does it look like it? Claims that, hmm. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Show setup. Or rather, show combat. And that is dependent on encounter state dot current actor ID being set or not. So we do this, we get a boolean explicitly, and then we do show combat. Okay, that works. Interesting. Interesting. I wonder why that's the case. That seems to be like a svelte thing. I don't know. I don't know why it would be like that. Okay, if I reset this, we're back here again. Excellent. This is good. So, help. Dragon. We got the combat. Boom. Yes. Ka ching This is what we want. <laughs> Bit less. <laughs> but sure, this is what we want. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, we've got the 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 thing. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Should I just hide the nav? Hmm. Let's not go into that right now. Uh, let's commit these changes. Uh, show a setup screen when combat is not active. Okay. 
That is progress. Whoop. Yeah, I should probably remove all these logs now. Um, console log. Let's just uh, amend this connect. There we go. Okay, so we've got the possibility to add actors before using them, and then we've got them inside here. Um, Let's see, we can advance turns. <clears throat> Should we maybe... For the setup screen. Should we maybe... Separate this into a separate component. Kind of feels like there's a lot of styling and logic in here. Yeah, let's actually do that. Um, just for the heck of it. <laughs> Actor list. We're going to actually put, just put the whole thing in here. I think. So let's do all this. Uh, I'm not really sure why I didn't just delete it like so. Uh, yep. And, do, 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 do. and then we're going to grab all of this. Put that in a style. And uh, yeah, I think we're just going to continue using this encounter state directly. So import encounter states like so. And we're going to need that. And this is now going to be its own thing. So let's just do actor list dot. First list, yes. And then in the setup screen, let's remove this. Here we're going to import actors list, like so. And in strings, we are moving these three, these four. So, uh, act. For add actor, actors list, uh, these four lines, add them in here. Uh, we need to remove a comma from here. I think that should be right. Uh, let's reset this. Uh, we add an elf, we add a dragon. They both show up as they should. Nice. Uh, split so, uh, extract actors list to own component. So it just cleans up uh, the setup screen a bit. A bit less. Um, JavaScript, uh, no styles and everything to keep it in, which is nice. Maybe we should just get rid of the header now. Uh, it's actually kind of useful having it there, so let's just keep it for now. Um, yeah, so my thinking is that maybe at a later point we'll add support <laughs> for. For, 
for wider screens by by um, uh, having like two columns, one for the the form and one for the the actress. Um, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I was kind of debating doing it now, but I'm not going to do that. I think. So we'll start combat, and we've got this. We can advance the turns. So yeah. It technically works now. Uh, let's have a look at the combat screen. Uh, screen. screen. And we'll just add in an <laughs> HR. You know, the good old sort. Um, that's actually quite good enough. Yeah. Um, Actually looks a bit better just by doing that. According to my limited design sense, of course. Add divider between um, turn tracker and combat arena. There we go. It was a bit weird with two menus on top of each other, but that's where we are. Uh, that's that's what it said at the moment. I just remove the nav altogether, actually, and just show. Actually, advanced turn should be in the nav, but I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to move. Mm. Let's see, turn tracker. Oh, it actually has a lot of logic inside of it. Oh, a lot, a lot. It's not that big actually. Hmm. What if, this is why we have git. Let's just remove this nav from here, like so. Boop. Um, why'd the button stay? Hello? Why are you still here? <laughs> what? That doesn't make any sense. They're not in the... The thingy. What? 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 Huh. Okay. Uh, sure. Um, where, where, where are you? What? Okay. Okay. There was just a, like a buggy thingy. Uh, <laughs> So if we now head into the the uh, let's see we don't need the margin at the top anymore. Actually, don't need styles at all. So the setup is all the way out to the top. Uh, however, in the combat screen, we'll put in the nav here. Um, we'll move the turn tracker inside of the nav. We'll add a section here, and then we'll style the section to have a margin at the top of four rem. So if we now add a dragon and an elf, we start the combat. This works. This does not, however. <clears throat> I think there is a way to make this header thingy taller. Uh, let's see, nav. Actually, going to show you the documentation here. Paste and go. And if we 
have a look. Uh, please see the top page right now for it to see the actual effect. Responsive. Um, you can have four elements, that's all nice. Open menu from the left. Fixed position. I was pretty sure there was a way to kind of different height and big. Uh, okay. You can set it to be any height you want. Nav dot imponent. Is the imponent part important? I don't, I don't know. Let's have a look. Do we have like in any imp imponent piece here? Section container. I'm kind of thinking that the imponent might just be, yeah, just the demo class I'm thinking. But that, does that mean that it comes with a built-in height set? I guess it does. Here we go. Here we go. Ooh, that is nice. <laughs> right, that's that's what I actually want. I think. Okay, let's let's uh, let's do that. Um, So if we boo, 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 head to the combat screen instead of the styles, uh, let's for the nav. Yeah, we need something that it's a bit more uh, let's just call it combat nav. Or rather Turn tracker container. <laughs> turn turn tracker container. Yes. Uh, height uh, auto. I guess. Yeah. Probably try to actually. I like this, but you should also be able to click these to be able to switch the. What if I make these pseudo buttons? And instead of 
doing it that way, I just do it the proper way. Pseudo, like so. And on, click. counter state can we set whether actually why, why have we overcomplicate this current actor ID actor that ID I think that should work let's have a look let's make this more narrow again now click these. Mm, kind of want to make them. Yeah, whatever. So let's click this. Oh man, it didn't work. Do we get any errors? No. Mm. Kind of felt like it should just work. Uh, okay, click, no, advanced turn, yes, click, no. I click the thing, and I set the, and, oh, right, I'm, I'm missing this. There we go. Now, if we click this, and now this, yeah, well, that does something. Uh, store.set is not a function. Oh, right, I think I explicitly didn't do that actually yeah I don't I don't think I'm gonna change that now so I'm actually gonna just add the function to do that uh, set current actor actor active actor and inside of it I'm gonna do encounter state update the current one and current actor ID is the same as actor dot id turn print back here set the current actor That is correct. So we need to do this. Try again. <laughs> that did a lot of things. <laughs> what, what? Okay. So it do does the right thing, but it also does none of the right things, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's let's uh, see. Um, so it sets the current actor, but it freaks freaks it out for some reason? Or is it maybe the turn tracker that does it? So when you click this, it does the thing. Why does it mess up with the, because an advanced turn would basically do the same thing. We set the current actor ID and return the current, yeah. So 
so strange. You know what? I'm not going to spend time on it now. This is, let's just remove this and remove a bit of this. That's the right, right point. Dragon Elf. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. Let's see. Did I change anything? Yeah. Um, move turn tracker to nav. Uh, we should probably have some kind of way to reset the combat, though. I think we'll just have to add that now, just just to be able to do it. Um. <clears throat> Maybe at the bottom of the thing. Sure, let's just let's just do that. Um. Like a div um, reset button. Can Container with a button. It says uh, it has the error class set. Text key. Uh, com combat screen reset. Uh, yeah. The strings. Come back, screen. Uh, yeah. On click. I wanted to move this a bit, so if we do uh, reset button container, display flex, justify content, flex end. And we're back, yeah. And reset button. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, I made some progress, We've got the two screens up and running. Uh, yeah, so it's basically usable at this point. Um, there are some tweaks that I want to do, um, like probably a bit more information for each token, the ability to remove tokens and add new ones uh, with, w during combat. So that's going to be like two things that I want to add. Apart from that, I'm pretty much happy with where it is at the moment, and then I'm just going to push it out there, get it running somewhere and be happy with with uh, with that for now just to be able to say that at least i've got this project out the door and um i won't have uh, i don't uh, i'll stop thinking about it <laughs> for now okay that's uh, that's it for the stream for now um for those of you watching all the way through thank you for staying with me i hope to see you next time snuckies